Good morning. Today we start on chapter 10. Um, chapter 10 deals with graphs and trees. You should start reading this in your book. Um, graphs are a very interesting subject. Um, they arise in a lot of applications in network analysis, network flow. Um, you'll encounter them in a class in data structures. A lot of computational problems are based on graphs. Now, conceptually, graphs are actually a very simple issue. Um, they're made up of two things. A graph G is actually comprised of two things, um, a set of vertices and a set of edges. Okay, so both of these are sets. Um, and let's go ahead and um, just give a couple of simple of examples, and then we can give some definitions. Now, first of all, we have these things called vertices. Okay, and vertices is the plural. The singular is the word vertex. And that is an E over there. There we go. Um, another word for these would be nodes. And what we would do over here is, is we, for a particular graph, we might say that um, V is composed of these four nodes that we're going to give names. And then what happens is we have a set of edges. And the notation I'm going to use is a little bit different than your book, uh, but what I'm going to say here is something like the following. There's an edge going from A to B. And maybe there is an edge going from C to D. And then there is also an edge going from A to C. So it looks like that. So there are two different sets that actually define a graph. We can see it's the vertices and the edges. And very frequently, people call this set E. Now we can draw a picture of this. Um, and we come over here, and we have a node there that's called A. We have a node over there that's called B. And we'll have a node over here called C. And we'll have a node over here called D. And then let's see, according to our set for, of edges, there is an edge from A to B. So that would correspond to that. And there is a set going from C to D. And that would correspond to that. And then there is an edge going from A to C. So we would come over here and we would have that. Okay, so what we have over here, this is the picture of the graph. Now, there are actually lots of ways that we can draw this picture and they're all equivalent. For example, I could come over here and I could say, well, here's A. And I could come over here and say, here's C. And I could come over here and say, here's B. And I'd come over here and I would say, here's D. And again, I have to draw the edges, so I would draw this one here like that. And I would draw one between C and D, and it looks like that. And I would draw one between A and C, and it would look like that. So these two graphs are completely identical. And in fact, we, uh, we have a special word for that in mathematics. We would say that they're isomorphic. Okay, iso, I believe, comes from the Greek, meaning the same. Morph means form. So we're saying that these two graphs are actually identical. Um, now, there are a couple of definitions we have to give here. Um, first of all, let's come over here and look at this graph here. And we would say that A and B are neighbors, or that they're adjacent. Okay, so we would say over here, that they are either adjacent or we could say that they are neighbors okay we would also say that there is a path from A to B that's very important okay a couple of other definitions that we should give here um, we should talk about what are called the neighbors. 
So for example, if I were to come over here and talk about what are the neighbors the neighbors of A, and we'll denote that by N of A. Okay, that's equal to the set of all of the vertices that are in fact adjacent. Okay, so we would say over here that um, A has neighbor B and it also has neighbor C. Like that. In a similar fashion, we would say that the neighbors of C are A and D. We would say that the neighbors of D are C. We would say that the neighbors of B is A. Okay, I hope that's clear. Okay, next, I'd like to consider there are different types of graphs that we'll be talking about in here. Um, so we want to give some quick uh, definitions and examples of what they of what these are. Um, the first distinction um, that we want to make here is is there's what are called directed graphs versus undirected graphs. So there's directed versus undirected. And the distinction here is the following that in the directed graph situation, you could think of it as like a one-way street. We have specified an arrow that tells us which way the path goes. In the undirected graph, we can assume that the path is bidirectional. You can go either way, so you won't see an arrow on it. Okay. So to give you a couple of just contrasting examples here, um, let's just consider the following graph. And let's make this a directed graph. So we have an arrow going there, and then we have an arrow going this way, and maybe we have an arrow going this way. something like that. Um, let's consider okay this would be an example okay no arrows okay so for example we want to talk, we're going to talk later on about the notion of a path and can you get to one point from another. Um, the question is, is in these graphs, I want to ask the question, is it possible to get from D to A? Now, we come over here in the directed graph and we see that there is a, an edge that comes into D, but there isn't an edge that goes out. So there actually does not exist any way to get from D to A. But over here, we note that, again, because the edges are bidirectional, I can get to A lots of ways. I can go from D to C to A, and I can also go from D to C to B to A. Now, when we come to specifying these graphs, we have to use a slightly different notation. For example, in this graph over here, when we wanted to say that there was an edge between A and B, we just denoted it the edge like this. Okay, we specified it as a set, and you may recall from our discussion of set theory that there is no difference between this set and this set right over here. Okay, so that what we're doing over here in the undirected graph is that when we specify something like that, we're specifying that you can go in either direction. What we're going to do over here to specify that there is actually an orientation or a direction of these, of these edges here is, is we're going to use an ordered pair so that um, if I want to specify that there is an edge from A to B, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make it an ordered pair. And I'm going to say A, B. And then we would also say that there is an edge from B to C. 
So I'd come over here and I would say B, C. There is an edge from A to C. And then there is also an edge from C to D. And this is now equal to the edges of this graph right over here. Okay, so the important distinction, remember, for a directed graph, we are using ordered pairs to specify the edges, and in an undirected graph, we just use sets. Readings. We're going to have a short discussion now about what are called weighted graphs. Um, these arise a lot in applications, and um, we will be talking about them much more later. Um, I want to suppose that we have a graph that has the following five vertices on it. There is a vertice called SW. We have a vertice called WB. Um, there is a vertice called W, and there is a vertice called T, and one called O. Um, if you like, you could think of SW as representing the city of Swakopmund. Um, WB is Walfus Bay. Uh, w, of course, represents Windhoek. T represents Sumed. And um, O, you could take your choice. It could be Oshikati, it could be Angwadiva. Uh, lots of O cities up north. Um, but there's something different about this graph. Um, we will notice that on each one of these graphs, or on this graph, that we have actually put a number on each edge. We've labeled each edge with a number. So somehow or other, I'm indicating that the path between Sakmund and Wavis Bay has this number 100 on it. Um, we've labeled this, this edge over here 300, 400, 400, 200. And the interpretation of these numbers, there can be many of them. Um, in one situation, we could assume that the number represents the distance between those cities. Um, I'm not sure that the numbers I've provided here are particularly accurate. Um, another possibility for an interpretation of this is we could imagine that this is a computer network and that the edges represent connections between the cities, and that the weights on the edges represent the number of packets in transit. So that when we come over here and I see 400 um, on the edge between Walvis Bay and Windhoek, that could indicate that there are currently 400 data packets um, on the connection between these two cities. Now, a very classic problem in graph theory, and one that we're going to return to later on. Um, let's suppose that um, we are currently up here in Anguadiva, and we are trying to figure out what is the most economical way to get to Walvis Bay. Now, if we just look at the graph and forget the weights on the edges, um, we note that there are actually two ways to get from Anguadiva to Walvis Bay. Um, both paths are going to take us through Tsumeb. In one situation, we would come over to Swakopmun, then head south down to Walvis Bay. In the other situation, from Tsumeb, we would head down to Windhoek, and then from Windhoek over to Walvis Bay. Now, what we can do with these weights now on the edges is, is we can actually calculate a cost associated with each one of these trips. So if I take the, I'll call it the northern route, um, if I go from Anguadiva to Tsumeb, that's 200. From Tsumeb to Swakopmund is another 300, so that's a total cost of 500. And then from Swakopmund down to Walvis Bay is another 100. So this trip over here would cost 600 units. If I take what I call the southern route, from Anguadiva to Tsumeb is 200, down to Windhoek gets us up to 600. And then from Windhoek over to Walvis Bay gets us up to 1,000. So in one situation here, we have a trip that cost 600. And in another situation, we have a situation where the trip will cost us 1,000. Now, in this particular graph, 
Determining the cheapest route was rather simple as there were only two paths between the two cities. Uh, we could certainly imagine um, situations where there were many more cities and many more interconnections where the path from one city to the other is not necessarily clear. We will be developing algorithms that are going to help us solve that problem. We have a couple of more definitions that we have to introduce here. Um, the notion of paths, cycles, and connected graphs. So take a look at the graph that we have drawn here. Um, we've used a slightly different way of denoting the edges here. Instead of labeling the nodes here, um, we've labeled the edges. We actually, um, perhaps we should label the nodes as well. So we can call that A, Um, this might be a little confusing. Please notice um, we have um, a node here um, that we've labeled E that is different than the edges. The edges um, also have E's, but we've put subscripts on them. So in other words, if we want to talk about the edge between nodes A and B, we can refer to it either as the edge E1, um, or we can speak of the edge between A and B. Um, okay, now your book gives lots of definitions here that I think are a bit confusing. Um, we're going to try and simplify it a bit to keep the thing, uh, to keep our definitions intuitive. So the first thing I want to talk about is what's called a path. Um, and again, that's pretty easy to um, see what a path would be. Um, for example, um, I could ask the question, is there a path from node A to node D? And the answer to that would be there certainly is a path. In fact, we could see that there are several of them. So if I were to talk about a path, A to D, we can see that there are a couple of ways to specify that. First of all, one way to get from A to D is as we would go um, on edge E1 and then edge E2. So one way to do that would be E1 followed by E2. We can see that there is um, yet other ways to do it. We can follow edge E1 to E3 to E5. So that would be E1 to E3 to E5. But then we notice that there is um, something kind of interesting about this graph. Notice that here we can keep going around in a circle. We could go clockwise or counterclockwise. This is what's called a cycle. Okay, here we have a cycle, B, C, D, okay? And actually, if I were to say, what is the, if I were to ask for a path from A to D, I could say, well, I'm gonna take E1, and then from E1, I'm gonna to go to E3, and then from E3, I'm going to take E5. And then from E5, I'm going to go to E2. And from E2, back on to E3. And then from E3, back to E5. Okay, now we will notice that in this particular path right over here, we've included a cycle. So we know we've given three paths here, and in fact, we could keep doing these cycles around and around. We could even at some point switch our direction. Um, but the point is, is, is that there is a path from A to D. Now, this is not a weighted graph. Um, it's an unweighted graph. If we like, we can talk about the lengths of the path here. And in this situation here, we would assume that each one of these edges um, has a weight of one. So here's a path from A to D that basically took us two edges. It would have a length of two. Um, this one over here would have a length of, from here to here is one, and from, from this is one, two, three, excuse me. 
And then down here we have a path that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can see these paths could keep getting longer and longer and longer. Um, a natural question to ask is, is what is the shortest path? And in this case over here, it would be this one right over here. Um, so what we've done over here is we have actually defined two things. We have defined paths, okay? And we have also defined cycles. Now, the third definition here is the notion of a connected graph. And a connected graph is a graph in which there is a path from any given node to any other node. So in this particular graph right here, we can see that this is a connected graph. I can pick out any two of these nodes and there is at least one path between any of them. Okay, so for example, if I were to come over here, um, oh, look at this, I have a node that is not labeled. I'll call that F. So the question is, is um, I'm claiming this is connected. I pick any two points here. I could pick A and F, and there certainly is at least one path between A and F. Is there a path between E and F? And the answer is sure. So um, this graph over here is what's called a connected graph. Let's imagine that I had a couple of more points here. For example, let's call that G, and let's come over here and have another node. We'll call that H, and maybe there's even an edge between them, like that. This graph now, and when I say this graph, I'm talking about the entire picture here. This graph is not connected. It's an unconnected graph, and we can see that very simply. Okay, we see that there is no way to get from node F to node H. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, there's one other definition that we need to give here. Um, I'll just write it down here. We'll talk about a tree. And a tree is any connected graph with the following. It has no cycles. So to give you an example, um, we're kind of running out of space over here. Here's an example of a tree. Okay, we can see that this is a connected graph. I can get from any point to any other point, but there are no cycles. And this would be an example of something that is not a tree. Okay, um, we note over here that there exists a cycle in this. Okay, so tree, not a tree. I want you to imagine that you're at a party and we are going to assume that if there's a person A that knows a person B, that the person B also knows A. Okay, that um, this is what's called a symmetric relation. Um, if Mary knows Sue, then Sue knows Mary. Now, I want to make the following statement or claim, and let's talk about this. So let's suppose there are five people at a party. And I want to ask the following question. Is it possible that everyone knows exactly three people?
So you can think about that in the following way. Suppose I have a graph, and the graph has five nodes, like that. And we are asking, is it possible that the degree of every one of these nodes is three? In other words, let's suppose this person knows this person, and this person knows this person, and that person knows that person. So here we have a person over here who knows exactly three people. And we can do this for somebody else. We'll do it for this person over here. This person knows this person. This person knows that person over there. And then they know that person over there. So we've taken care of two people here. We've taken care of this person and we've taken care of this person. The question is, is can I complete this graph? Is there a way that the number of the degree of each one of the nodes for every one of the five nodes would be three? And I hope by now you have figured out that that would be impossible. And the reason why that would be impossible is as if I have five nodes and we're saying that each node has a degree of three, then the total degree of the graph would be five times three, which is 15. But we have just stated that the total degree of a graph has to be an even number, and 15 is not an even number. So to answer this question, is it possible every one knows exactly three people? The answer to that is no. Let's consider a different problem, though. Suppose we have six people. Now, the thing to think about here is, is now if I go six times three, that's 18, that's an even number. That doesn't mean that the answer to this question is yes. Um, the only thing that we have proven here so far is, is that it is possible. The next thing that we would have to do is, is we would have to actually construct such a graph. And I hope that I am able to do that as follows. So let's come over here and let me see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do that. And now the degree of this is two, that is two, and that is two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and draw that and that. And that. So, so far at this party, um, everybody knows two other people. And now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do the following. And now if we see this has three, this has a degree of 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 three, and this has a degree of three. So we have just demonstrated now that with six people at a party, it is possible that everyone knows exactly three people. Fun.